Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we'll be talking about the geometric and the telescoping series. So earlier, we talked about the fact that generally for an infinite series, or in this case, an infinite sum, which in this case can be interchanged, the idea is that, well, it was really difficult to generally find the sum of an infinite series. We can test for convergence and divergence using various tests of different kinds, but calculating the sum of an infinite series is generally very difficult. However, there's two exceptions, exceptions to this rule. The first one is a geometric series, and the other one is a telescoping series. So let's talk about each one in a bit of detail. So a geometric series is some is a fairly nice series, so let's talk about what that looks like. So a geometric series. Okay, so what is that? Well, a geometric series is a series that is of a specific form. It's of the form the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of a r to the n minus 1, or it's also sometimes written in the following way. The summation from n equals 0 to infinity of a r to the power of n. Any series of this form is a geometric series. So let's just talk about what these variables kind of you know mean. Well, a is essentially just a constant. Sometimes it's the first term in the geometric series, but in this case, we'll just refer to a as a constant. Uh, r is known as a common ratio. And in this case, for a geometric series to converge, the absolute value of the common ratio has to be less than 1. There's a proof for this, which I might do in another video in a later time. But for now, what the more important thing you have to know is that the common ratio has to be less than 1, or rather the absolute value of it has to be less than 1. Or in other words, the common ratio has to be between minus 1 and 1. There's a reason for this, but this is something I'll discuss in another video if I have time. But right now, I just wanted to get this out there. And finally, n is the number of terms. Okay, if the common ratio is between minus 1 and 1, or the absolute value of it is less than 1 equivalently, this series will always converge, and the sum of the series is given by the following. So the sum of the series, in general, is going to be a over... 1 minus r. And of course, as I mentioned, this will converge if the absolute value of r is less than 1. Okay, well, this isn't so bad. So how do we, you know, use this idea to find the sum of a geometric series? Okay, well, let's just, you know, talk about this for a second. So suppose I give you the following series. So here we have the following. So suppose I ask you to find the sum of the following series. Well, okay, let's just write down the series. So it's the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 9 to the minus n plus 2 times 4 to the n plus 1. Okay, well, what does this look like? Well, let's just, you know, take a look at this. This is equal to the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of 9 to the minus n times 9 squared, because we can always, we can always split up exponents like this, times 4 to the n times 4 to the 1. Okay, so we have 9 squared times 4. Well, that's just 81 times 4. And if we go ahead and multiply this out, we'll just get 324 on the outside. So we can take that out of the summation. So you will get 324 times the summation from n equals 1 to infinity. Okay, well, in this case, we have 9 to the negative n, but that's the same thing as 1 over 9 to the n. So this right here will be technically equal to 4 to the n over 9 to the n. And we could combine this as one term, 
as 4 to over 9 to the n. But I'm not going to do that for a very specific reason. And the reason for that is because, well, let's take a look at the geometric series. Well, according to the form of a geometric series, the index has to start at 1 in this case, or 0, but in this case, the index has started at 1. But if the index starts at 1, we need an n minus 1. Currently, we have an n there, so this is a bit problematic. So we have two ways to fix this. Either we can shift the index down to 0 and, may, and keep the n in some way. And remember that shifting indices changes the n value. So if we shift down, we got to make this go up by 1. So that doesn't really help here. Or the other exception is we could keep the 1 and somehow make this an n minus 1. Okay, so the second method is actually a little bit easier to work with. So let's just kind of go with that. So our goal is to make this an n minus 1 somehow. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we can do is the following. So we get 324 times the summation from n equals 1 to infinity. So I'm just going to undo that step. So it's just going to be 4 to the n over 9 to the n. But now let's kind of take a look at this. The next step we can do is the following. I can manipulate the original series by multiplying and dividing by certain numbers or terms so that the value of the geometric series stays the same, but the form of it slightly changes. What do I mean by that? Well, I can rewrite this as 4 to the n minus 1 over 9 to the n minus 1, but I can't just randomly change it like that. I gotta multiply by 4 over 9 to cancel out what I did. Because and the reason for that is because of exponent rules. This is just gonna result in 4 over 4 to the n over 9 to the n. So that's good. Okay, we can pull this out of the summation. So that's gonna give you 144 times the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of 4 to the n minus 1 over 9 to the n minus 1. Okay, well, now we get the following. This is going to be 144 times the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of 4 over 9 to the power of n minus 1. That's good, because now this is now in the correct form. It starts with n equals 1, and there's an n minus 1 there. Good. That's exactly what we wanted. So what we can do now is we can rewrite this as 144 times the following. So let's just go ahead and draw a line. Okay, so it's going to be 1 over 1 minus 4 over 9. Okay, but if you go ahead and do the math out, that's going to give us 1,296 over 5, which is our final answer for this geometric series. Okay, that was nice. Let's do another example. And we'll have another one after this for geometric series, and then we'll move on to telescopic series. Okay, so how does this one work? Well, this one says we have the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 4 to the power of 3n over 5 to the n minus 1. Well, okay, what does this mean? This is just, this just means that, what are we going to do? Well, one thing we can do is rewrite this in the following way. So this time we get the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 4 to the power of 3. And we raise that to the power of n, and then we divide this by 5 to the n times 5 to the minus 1. But 5 to the minus 1 is just equal to 1 over 5, and since this is in the denominator, it just goes in the numerator. So we get 5 times the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 4 to the power of 3, which is negative 64, over 5, and we raise this all to the power of n. But here's the problem though. In this case, r is equal to negative 64 over 5. And the absolute value of r in this case is bigger than 1. So therefore, this thing diverges. So we don't have to worry for the work. We immediately know that thing, this thing is not going to converge in any way. 
Okay, let's do a slightly harder example of this. So I should probably add the fact that we want to find the sum of the series. So I should probably add that sentence to make the questions all kind of consistent with each other. So I'm just go ahead and do that. So there we go, find the sum of this thing. So let me just go ahead and do that. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, let's go ahead and do another question. So that was just be fixing this. So find the sum of this series. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this time we have the summation from n equals one to infinity of two to the n plus three plus negative one to the power of n five to the n plus one. And then we would simply divide this by 10 to the power of n plus two. Okay, well, how do we deal with this? Well, one thing we can do is kind of break this sum apart into a more nicer thing to work with. So we get the summation of n equals 1 to infinity. Okay, so 2 to the 3 is 8. So we can split the exponent using exponent laws. So we get 8 times 2 to the n. And then this part, we're going to get plus negative 1 to the n times 5 to the n times 5. And then we would divide all of this by 10 to the n times 100. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we can write this in the following way. So 8 over 100 is part of the fraction we're going to use because we're going to split this fraction. And 5 over 100, 100 is going to be another part of the fraction. So basically what I'm saying is that we can split the summation in the following way. We can write this as 8 over 100 times 2 over 10 to the power of n. So that's just me splitting this part of the summation. And then plus the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of 5 over 100 times negative 5 over 10 and the negative 5 comes from the fact that we can combine these two into negative 5 to the n and then we can raise it and we can divide this by, by 10 to the n so we can just raise this all to the power of n like that okay well let's keep going so we get 8 over 100 or 2 over 25 which we can subsequently pull out of the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 2 over 10, which is just 1 over 5 to the power of n, plus 5 over 100, which is just 1 over 20, times the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 5 over 10, but that's just negative 1 over 2 to the n. Well, okay, so how can we proceed from here? So now we have the same problem. The index is at 1, that's good. But then this needs to be an n minus 1. It's not. So we need to kind of fix this problem in, this, in the exact same way we did with the first example. So we can rewrite this in the following way. We can write this as 1 to the n over 5 to the n times 1 to the n. Uh, let me just go ahead and do that in another line, actually. So we get the same thing here. So this is going to give us... Let's see, negative 1 to the n over 2 to the n. Okay, so far so good. So we can now split the exponents like so. So we get the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 to the n minus 1 over 5 to the n minus 1 times 1 over 5. 
And that's fine because, you know, we can always split an exponent like that using the exponent rules. And then here we get this, we can do the same thing. So we get the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. And then same thing, we can multiply this by negative 1 over 2. So we cannot combine on both of these terms like so. We can pull the 1 fifth out and we can pull the minus 1 half out of the summation. So if we do that, we're going to get 2 over 125 times the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 to the n minus 1 over 5 to the n minus 1. And let's see, here we're going to get minus 1 over 40 times the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, so at this point, we can use the formula for a geometric series. So we get 2 over 125 times 1 over 1 minus 1 over 5. And then here we'll get 1 over 40 times 1 minus 1, sorry, 1 over 1 minus minus 1 over 2. And there's the reason there's a minus 1 half is because there's a minus 1 here, hence the minus 1 half. And if you go ahead and do the math out, you'll get 1 over 300. And that right there is our final answer. So this is how a geometric series essentially works for the most part. And we can use this to solve many questions that have similar kind of formats. Okay, with that, let's move on to the next kind of series that we can actually find the sum for, which is a telescoping series. So let me just write that down. So a telescoping series. This is similar to kind of like a kaleidoscope where you see a bunch of patterns that kind of crisscross back and forth and then converge it to some uh, some fixed pattern. And it's the the same kind of principle applies here. So, you know, you have a kaleidoscope, you see a bunch of patterns that kind of swizzle back and forth. It's kind of the same idea here. You have a bunch of patterns that kind of eventually just kind of converge to a single point. And you can find a sum using that kind of pattern recognition. What do I mean by that? Because that was a little bit ambiguous at first. So let's just kind of talk about how this works. You're going to eventually find that in a telescoping series, you'll get the same pattern repeating over and over, and you'll eventually notice that many terms cancel out, except either the first or last term or something. So let's just kind of start off ex explaining this with an example. So basically, most terms in the series or in this case, the infinite sum, rather, if I'm being really picky about my definitions, most terms in the series will cancel. I use series and sums interchangeably, but in this case, I really mean like the infinite sum. A series is a bit more general because we have, to, we have things like the Taylor series, the Maclaurin series, and later on, we'll do something called the power series. And even later, when I do my video lists on Fourier analysis, that's we'll do something called the Fourier series. So there's a, and eventually when I get complex analysis, I'll do something called call the Laurent series. So there's quite a lot of different kinds of series in mathematics. And in this case, I'm when I say series, I'm referring to the infinite sums, but don't get confused by the fact that series is uh, infinite sums. The, series, the, the word series actually implies many different kinds of series that we see in mathematics. In this case, it just happens to be able to be used interchangeably. Okay, now, that, that aside, let's do an example of this thing and kind of talk about how this works. Okay, so suppose I ask you to find the sum of the following. So it's going to be the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 3n plus 2. Okay, we want to find the sum of the series. So how does this work? So one for the, one of the first methods you use for this telescoping series is you find a partial sum. And then at the very end, what we're going to do is find a limit of the partial sums, 
which you will eventually notice just tends to go to the actual value of the sum because we end up taking the limit of that partial sum. So let's just find a partial sum first. So the partial sum is going to be Sn, and we're going to take the sum from i equals 0 to infinity, or not, we shouldn't use infinity because this is a partial sum, so we should use n of 1 over i squared plus 3i plus 2. And just so we're very really clear, i is not the imaginary number i, it's just, it's just an index. So don't get confused by that. So you might be asking, well, how does this help? Well, one thing we can do now is write this as a partial fraction expansion. So to do that, I'll be factoring out the denominator. So if we factor the denominator, we'll get i plus 2 times i plus 1. And then we can use partial fraction decomposition on this thing. And I will do it as out. However, in the later videos, I will not be doing the partial fraction decomposition every time because it, I expect by later videos, you would have been proficient or at least somewhat know how to do the partial fraction decomposition. But of course, if you need a refresher, feel free to go back to my videos and watch the videos on partial fraction decomposition. And But of course, if you have any questions, just you know let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. So let's keep going. So at this point, I've just broken down the decomposition into uh, a sum of linear terms because these are linear terms. So I don't need a, I don't need to have coefficient linear coefficients on the top. So we'll get a times i plus two plus b times i plus one. Okay, so we can now group the like terms together. So if we do that, we'll get a plus a a plus b times i plus 2a plus b. Okay, so how does this work? Well, we can now go a plus b is equal to 0, and then 2a plus b is equal to 1 if we match the coefficients. I will go ahead and solve the system. So if you go ahead and solve the first equation and the second equation, so let's just go with the first equation. So if you do this, you'll get a equals or let's go with b, so b equals negative 8, this is from equation 1. So if I go ahead and substitute this into equation 2, we'll get the following. So from the second equation, we'll get 2a minus a is equal to 1, so a equals 1. But this directly implies that b is equal to negative 1. Okay, so what does this mean? This means we can write the decomposition as 1 over i plus 1 minus 1 over i plus 2. So that's going to be the partial fraction decomposition. So now we can go ahead and write the sum from i equals 0 to n of 1 over i plus 1 minus 1 over i plus 2. Okay. So now, let's just kind of write down a few terms, and we'll notice a very interesting pattern. So if you go ahead and write down a few terms of this thing, well, let's plug in 0. So the first term is going to be 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 minus 1 over 5, and so on. So let's keep going ahead and adding the general terms. So eventually, you're going to reach the point where you're going to get 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 2. Very interesting. So what does this mean? Well, if you take a look, this will cancel. This the All of the terms will cancel if you open the brackets up. And eventually this term will cancel too with the next term. So all of them will cancel except for the very last term. Because when you reach the end term in the sequence, of course, there's no term after this. So the last term is the only term that actually survives this. So in other words, the partial sum, so Sn in this case, is 1 minus 1 over n plus 2. So if I take the limit of this thing as n approaches infinity, 
of 1 minus 1 over n plus 2, well, that term is going to go to 0. So we're just going to be left with 1 minus 0 or 1. And that right there is our sum. So as you can see, this is a very fun way to kind of find a sum. No, and that's that's not an exaggeration. A telescoping series is actually a very interesting way to do summations. And yeah, that's basically how the telescoping series works. So let's do two more examples, starting with this one. Okay, so once again, we want to find the sum of the following series. So we're going to be summing n equals 1 to infinity of n over n plus 1 factorial. Okay, well, what's this equal to? Well, one way you can manipulate this series, because right now it's kind of hard to make up a pattern like this. So we have to manipulate the series to make it look like something that's workable. So one thing we can do is we can add and subtract a 1 from the top. On the bottom, we'll get an n plus 1 in the denominator. But now we can write this as n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial minus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And we can write our summation like that instead. So let me just go ahead and put a summation sign because this is technically uh, not right. There should be a summation sign in both of these. So let me just go ahead and do that. n equals 1 to infinity, and then same thing. All right, and let's put another summation there. Okay, so let's go ahead and expand this a little bit more because there's a f one last thing we can do here, and that's going to be the summation from n equals 1 to infinity. Uh, let's see, it's going to be n plus 1 over n plus 1, and then of course that's going to be left with an, we're going to be left with an n factorial. Here we're going to, give, we're going to have the same thing, and then this cancels. So we're finally, we're left with the following summation from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n factorial minus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so what does this kind of give us? Well, this is going to give us, let's just, you know, do a few expansions out. This is going to give us 1 minus 1 over 2, plus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 6, plus 1 over 6 minus 1 over 24, and so on. You'll notice that eventually, all of these will cancel. And the last kind of term that will be left over is this so and when we, take the, when we take the limit of that partial sum to zero to infinity it's just going to go to zero so i'm not going to bother writing it down but the idea is that eventually you're just going to get one minus zero or one and that will be the value of our sum okay and let's do one more example just to kind of end off this video on a in, on an interesting note Okay, so suppose I want to find the following sum. So find the sum of the following series. So it's going to be the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of the natural log of 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 all squared. Now this is interesting because you might not notice right away how to split the summation because of this natural log. But with some ingenuity, we can do that. So in the last example, I didn't write down the partial sum because it was a bit obvious as to what to do. Well, after the first step, of, at least. <laughs> but in this case, I will actually do all the work out. So let's just write down the partial sum. So Sn is going to be the summation. And I'm just going to stick with my n as my index, just because I can. But I should technically, I should probably be using i to be honest. Actually, let's just do that. i to n of the natural log. Actually, let's use k of natural log of one minus one over k plus one all squared. Okay, and we just fix that i a little bit because that looks a bit weird. Okay, 
Now let's go ahead and put this as one fraction. So this is going to give us the summation from i equals 1 to k of the natural log of k plus 1 all squared minus 1 over k plus 1 all squared. Okay, so one thing we can do is expand the numerator and see if everything nice happens. So if we do that, we'll get the summation from i equals 1 to k of the natural log of k squared plus 2k plus 1 minus 1 over k plus 1 all squared. Okay, so I noticed that the ones cancel. So we get the summation from i equals 1 to k of the natural log of, let's see, we're going to get k squared plus 2k divided by k plus 1 all squared. And then what we can do is the following. The first thing I can do is factor a k out from the numerator. So if you go ahead and do that, we'll get the following. So we get i equals 1 to k of natural log of k times k plus 2 over k plus 1 all squared. Okay, and then we can write this as a product of a few things. So now we get the summation from i equals 1 to k of natural log of k over k plus 1 times k plus 2 over k plus 1. Okay, so we can now split this as the sum of two natural logs because of log laws. Remember that if I have ln of a, b, that's equal to ln of a plus ln of b. So we can kind of do the same thing right here, except we have a, this is my a and this is my b. So if we go ahead and split the natural log, we get the following. So we're going to get the summation from i equals 1 to k of natural log of k over k plus 1 plus the summation from i equals 1 to k of natural log of k plus 2 over k plus 1. Okay, so what we can do now is kind of see what happens with, once again, the patterns. So let's just write down a few expansions. So if you do this, we'll get natural log of 1 over 2 times 2 over 3 times 3 over 4 times 4 over 5 times, and then we just we will keep going. And then eventually, we'll notice that the last term is just going to be, well, we're going all the way to k, so it's just going to be k over k plus 1. Okay, and we do a very similar thing right here. So let's go ahead and do this again. So natural log of 3 over 2 times 4 over 3 times 5 over 4 times, let's see, 6 over 5. And then same thing, we would keep going. And the last term is going to be k plus 2 over k plus 1. Very interesting. So what happens? Well, this cancels... All the bottom, all the terms in the denominator cancel out, and the numerator except the one all cancels out. So eventually, this five is going to cancel too, and eventually, the only term that's going to be left over is this k, is this k plus one. Because in order for this to cancel, we will need another, we will need to multiply by another term, but we don't have any more terms, so this is the only term that stays over. The same thing happens here, or similarly, the trees are going to cancel, the fives are going to cancel. Eventually, the 4s are going to cancel, the 6s are going to cancel, and so on. The only term that's going to survive is this k plus 2. And once again, the reason that happens is because in order for that to cancel... Oh, I should probably cancel the 4s as well while I'm at it. Yeah. So, yeah, every term is going to cancel except the k plus 2. Because for that to cancel, we will need to multiply by another term. But we don't have any more terms to multiply with, so that is not going to disappear. Okay, so finally, we're left with the following partial sum. So we're left with the natural log 
of 1 over k plus 1 plus the natural log of that should be that shouldn't be an absolute value there we go k plus 2 over 2 and then we can use the laws of logarithm logarithms once again to combine this thing so we get the natural log of k plus 2 divided by 2 times k plus 1 okay so now what we can take the limit as n approaches infinity of the natural log of k plus 2 over we can expand the denominator so we get 2k plus 2 on the bottom and then by the limit laws we can take the natural log of the limit as n approaches infinity of k plus 2 and that should be a k and actually that should be a k because the variable of interest is k in this case so k plus 2 over 2k plus 2 and then we can factor the k out so we get the natural log of the limit as k goes to infinity now before i proceed with this limit i should note you can press you can do this limit with l'hopital's rule but you don't really need to because there's a much easier way to do this we can factor k out from numerator so we get 1 plus 2 over k on the bottom we'll get a k times 2 plus 2 over k these cancel and when we take the limit to infinity these are going to both going to go to zero so we're just left with the natural log of one over two but we can use the log loss to write this a little bit differently because write this as natural log of one minus the natural log of two but the natural log of one is zero so we get zero minus the natural log of two or negative log of two and that right there is our final answer so this about covers it for geometric and telescoping series. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. But otherwise, if this really helped you, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll be happy and I'll be appreciated very much. Thank you all so much and have a great day.